Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Thanksgiving 2022, and I'm in between doing stuff with family. So I thought I'd take just a moment and talk with you about Nebraska. And as uh, the, the season winds down, the only topic that's on anyone's minds right now, let's be honest, is who the next coach is going to be. And if you followed my videos, you know that from day one, from the moment Mickey Joseph was named interim head coach, from that moment, I've been pounding the table for Mickey Joseph to become the next head coach, the official head coach at Nebraska. Now, after the Wisconsin game, I was fairly emotional, and I was probably said some things I'd like to take back in terms of the way I said them. I might have been maybe a little bit too um, strident in some of the language I used. But I still contend that although I wanted Mickey Joseph to be coach for you know the last couple months, I'm now kind of rethinking that in terms of a hierarchy of coaches that I think that would be best for Nebraska. So to be clear, before I go any further, if Mickey Joseph becomes the actual official head coach, which I'll tell you in a moment what I think is, is possible, if not probable, I'll get to that in a second. If Mickey Joseph is named the coach, I got no problem with it. I'm fine with it. He'll, he'll be a good coach, and Nebraska will win more games next year than they did this year. And I'm confident that Mickey Joseph will be uh, do a really good job if he was chosen. But when I look at all the available options, I'm going to give you my top three choices for coach. I'll explain why. And uh, then come down to why I think Mickey Joseph might be the head coach. And there's a reason I'm going to give you in a second, which I don't think anyone's talked about. So beginning with my first choice is Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders checks every single box that Nebraska needs, in my opinion. He's, a, he's proven to be a good coach on the field. And if you watch the series of videos that he and Jackson State have been putting online for the last couple of years, you'll see that he's a good man who loves his players. His players love and respect him. He's a culture values guy that would fit in perfectly at Nebraska, and he'd be great at press conferences. And recruiting, you're not going to get a better recruiter than Deion Sanders. I don't see any downside to Deion. He's my number one choice. And if I was at Nebraska, I would find some way to break out the, the checkbook, and I'd do this you know, before where I pulled out a pen and said I would send Trev my pen to sign him. I would sign Deion Sanders tomorrow, $10, $15 million a year. I would find a way to get him here. I think he is a game changer. I think he's the best option. I know there's rumors out there that say he's not coming to Nebraska, but you know what? Don't believe nothing until you actually see the actual press conference. I think that Deion is the number one choice, and I think that the folks at Nebraska probably realize that he's the number one choice, and I think there's a good chance he becomes the next head coach. So Deion is my number one choice. Number two, and this was difficult for me, this is hard for me, and when I say this next guy's name, I had to do some serious looking and thinking and recalibrating what I thought would be good for Nebraska, and that's Urban Meyer. I know Urban Meyer comes with a laundry list of caveats and potential pitfalls, but the guy knows how to coach, and he also knows how to recruit, and he knows how to take a team and turn them into a winner in a way that... No other coach in college in history, on paper, with his record at a top school, has ever done. Maybe we'll never do again. Yes, I know, if you hire Urban Meyer, you need to find a way to keep his hands off of players and uh, get some therapists on the sidelines to uh, stop him from berating players unnecessarily. And you, you don't want your, your daughter hanging out at a party with him lest he ask your daughter to come to a lap dance. But... If they've got some clauses in the contract, if they've got some way to have some sort of a way out of a deal with Urban Meyer, should he go down the wrong moral path, I think Urban Meyer is also a good choice. Now, truth be told, if not for all the moral failings, Urban Meyer would probably be my number one choice. But as it is, with the moral failings he brings with him, Deion Sanders is number one, Urban Meyer is number two, and he is, frankly... A distant number two, but I think you could get him for way less money than you could get Dion, and with a lot of caveats in that contract. So Urban Meyer, probably risk-reward, is probably a good choice. Finally, Mickey Joseph. You know, there's so many other coaches whose names have been brought up from other programs, and all of them are boring, milk, milk toast retreads. And then the ones that aren't haven't been proven in the way that supposedly I'm told that we need to have a proven coach at Nebraska. In other words, you either bring someone in who's been eh, okay as a coach, or maybe even had some winning seasons, but he's like a experienced guy who brings no excitement and no recruiting, nothing to Nebraska, except being a stabilizing force, if that's what you want. 
And if that's the case, if that's what the other choices are, which I think that is basically all the other choices, then why not go with Mickey Joseph? A guy who has been a stabilizing force, he's a great recruiter, the players love him. Look at the, the way, in the Wisconsin game, he openly said he loved those players as they would embrace each other before they hit the field, and the way the players said they loved him. I think that Mickey Joseph has all the, the, the markings, all of the, um, all of the makings, that is, of being a really good head coach somewhere down the road, and I think that since Nebraska rebuilding is going to take not just one year, maybe two or three or four or five years. I mean, you got to be honest with yourself. But you're looking at a team in total shambles right now, going to have to rebuild from the bottom up. Given where we are, why not Mickey Joseph? In other words, if you don't get Dion and you don't get Urban Meyer, those guys, in my opinion, are no-brainers. If you don't get one of those, well, okay, Urban Meyer is a, a brainer. you got to think about it a little bit. But if you don't get those guys, then Mickey Joseph, why not? Everybody else is boring. And when I say boring, I don't mean personality-wise. There's just no, It's like Mike Riley and Bill Callahan and Scott Frost all over again. Why not go with Mickey Joseph? Now, check this out. I think that there's a good chance that Mickey Joseph could be uh, the number one choice, and we just don't know it. I'll tell you why I think that. It has been said that Trev Alberts has not yet sat down and talked to Mickey Joseph about the job. Now, think about where we are. This is 2022. With all of the diversity uh, hiring and all of the, the focus on equity and, and, and social justice and all of that, just but on the but by the very fact that that would be a very weird look, it wouldn't make any sense not to talk to Mickey Joseph. In other words, if you want, if if you brought him in as interim, and and Mickey says they haven't even had the conversation, that leads me to believe that maybe the reason they haven't had the conversation is because Trev has made his decision; he's going to hire him anyway, and he doesn't need to have a sit down conversation with him. Because if he doesn't sit down and talk to Mickey Joseph, I have to be honest with you, if that doesn't come to pass. It says if, if the Iowa game is over and then they go right into a press conference to bring in the next coach and Mickey Joseph never had that conversation, that would be a really, really bad look for Nebraska. A really bad look. Unless the coach is one of those first two guys, Urban Meyer or, or Deion Sanders. Which I think the odds of Deion Sanders are better than some of y'all think. The odds of Urban Meyer might also be better than some of y'all think. And the same with Mickey Joseph. I think the odds or at least 50-50, but it's one of those three guys. Thanks for watching. Take care. Hope you enjoy your Thanksgiving, and I'll see you next video. Peace.